Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Chris Algieri. It seems like everywhere I go, you go, everywhere you go, I go. I could say the same thing about you, man. <laughs> um, well, we're here in Vegas. Um, another good fight week for us to, to sit in back and enjoy. Devin Haney versus Linares. I know you're doing your, your work again for Matchroom and stuff like that, but just talk to me about that main event. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a great matchup. It's a, um, a big step up for, for Devin Haney. Uh, very interested to see what this young champion can do you know, with an old lion like like, and I use that word very mm. loosely, old lion like uh, Linares, because he's. Um, I mean, I still think he's tip top. You know, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal champion, multiple division world champion, um, super dangerous guy. Always gives a good account of himself, um, even in his losses. So uh, this is a, a massive step up for Haney, and uh, like I said, very interested to see how how he handles it. I'm glad you mentioned that. You said the old lion about the bookies and the betting shops around here are. Not giving Linares much of a chance. Now, is that disrespectful to to Linares, or is that just testament to how good everyone thinks Devin Haney is? Uh, I, I'll pose a third option. Okay. Maybe they know something we don't. Mm. <laughs> That's what I, I, when I see something that wide, it's 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 very strange, especially for a dangerous guy like like uh, like Linares. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if things are in the gym because you know bookies are. They got they got their ear to the ear to the ground, you know. So um, an interest, interesting interesting thought, but I don't know. You know, maybe maybe, maybe they are could be overhyping, or it could be you know like you said disrespecting the former champion. I don't know, but uh, those guys are usually right. <laughs> yeah, they usually yeah, well, <laughs> Those guys are usually right. The house always wins. So that's yeah, what they say. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, all going well for Devin Haney. I know you're a fight fan and you're a huge boxing nut, like like. Most like people here, like all yeah. of us, yeah. But the fight that we all want to see in this lightweight division is going to be Teofimo Lopez against Devin Haney. But before we go on to that, I just want to talk about the, the WBC situation because we've heard the WBC talk about how Devin Haney is the world champion, mm -hmm. but then we've also heard the WBC say, yes, Teofimo is undisputed. We have Teofimo is undisputed and Devin Haney is the WBC champion, then we have two WBC champions in this division. So, can you make sense of any of that? Uh, yeah, the governing bodies love to have multiple <laughs> belts because they get they get paid. Mm. Um, you know, it's the fight has to happen in order. You know, I mean, I look at Tiafimo as undisputed. He beat Lomachenko. Lomachenko was undisputed. Um, you know, he beat the champion, beat the man. So, um, you know, Haney has his has the WPC belt, but I'm old school. Okay, mm. so we fight. Yeah, so. Have him fight. You know. It, it, Maybe in, in terms of the trajectory of their career, it's not the ideal time because they probably can make a much bigger fight in a couple of years. But if they got a belt thing to settle, they got to settle that. Well, that's the thing. We've, we've seen it with Josh Taylor last weekend. Um, look how disappointed we all, we all are that we can't see the heavyweights do it. And right. Tyson Fury and Joshua get the undisputed. It's, the boxing needs this, these undisputed fights. Yes. We need to find out who number one. It's okay having four world champions in one division, but who's the best we can't have four undefeated guys in one division mm -hmm. like 140 we're looking at all these undefeated guys like it, you know at one point it was um, it was uh, Pro Gray uh, Taylor it was uh, Ramirez Ryan Martin as well he and was they were all yeah. undefeated and it's like it's like, how is that possible how do we have three world champions everyone's undefeated mm -hmm. we gotta fight each other thank god we did and we got, we, you know, we, got, we got the king of the heap now which mm -hmm. is Taylor um, awesome fight by the way I know you, I, I want to come on to that, but I, yep. I, I just want to stay on this Lopez Haney thing mm -hmm. as well. Your thoughts on that fight then? I mean, two, they're, they're both young, they both yep. come again. We can see them fight the rematch, the trilogy. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We can see this going on and on if they fight now. Do you know what I mean? And it, yeah. Two young fighters like that, two hungry lions like that. I mean, we're, we're going to be in for a treat when these two do meet each other. So, how do you see that fight going? I, honestly, I, I got asked this earlier. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. So we've seen Tiafimo step up, right? The Richard Comey fight. Mm. Nakata well, Nakatani, who turned out to be a world mm. beater. You know, um, Nakatani, Comey, Lomachenko. Those are his last three fights. Crazy. Awesome step ups. Huge step up fights, all of them. And performed, uh, other than the Nakatani fight, he overperformed in the other two. Mm. Um, you know, and really showed what he was. He, he, and he got better. Like, I think the Nakatani fight made him better, even mm. though yeah. it was a fight that people gave him a lot of hell for. Um, and then in hindsight, it really was a good performance if you really think about it because Nakatani is a really dangerous, beast, really dangerous yeah. guy um, but then knocking out Richard Comey with one punch he was a killer puncher himself mm. and then outboxing the boxing Lomachenko you know it's like pff, man so Haney needs those kind of breakout performances like Tiafimo before you realize what he is because if you ask me about Tiafimo before Comey mm -hmm. you know coming off the Nakatani fight I didn't think all that you know I was like oh, he's, he's good I like him 
now I'm like the kid's awesome. Yeah. You know, so it's hard to say. It's a tough one too. Yeah. yeah it's hard yeah. to say. You know, at this point of the career with Haney because he's so young, and um, I think he's got a lot of growing to do. And I think tomorrow night it gives us an opportunity to really take a look into what. Haney's I was going to say be. that. Do we need to see this fight tomorrow night before oh. we can pick a winner? Oh yeah. I I, I think. I think he, you know, he steps up and he shows that he's got something else, mm. you know, or he falters and he loses to to, to Lawrence because that's he's a very live underdog, even though he's a big underdog. I'm glad you mentioned Nakatani because Lomachenko's fighting him next. I mean, Lomachenko, I mean, the amateur career is unreal. <laughs> amateur career is unreal, but even as a pro, man, he's only 13 and 0. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a different sport, professional amateur boxing, but he seems to be taking the biggest challenges when and when they came up. So testament to him. But what a fight! Yeah, yeah, Nakatani's a very dangerous guy. Um, He's and I was I said this earlier about Lomachenko. It's like it, if he's taking a backward step at all, Nakatani's gonna be a problem because mm -hmm. he's that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be there. You're not you're not gonna come out. He's gonna be in your face. He's gonna push the action. He's a big guy. He's a big 35 pounder. He's gonna push it. He can punch. He's strong. He can take a shot. He'll get up off the canvas. Um, he's got no quit in him. You know, no Lomachenko, no Mashchenko, no right? Yeah. You're not getting a, a Japanese guy to quit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so uh, it's a fight. He's gonna to have to deal with this guy for 12 rounds, and he's gonna bring it. So I think it's a, I think it's a testament to Lomachenko where his head's his head's at. Mm -hmm. He knows he wants a real fight. That's mm -hmm. a real fight. He wants to get back in the mix. Yeah, and that's a good fight for it. I'm glad you mentioned. Well, Josh Taylor, you were there as well last week. I mean, we, we finally see who the number one, the top dog is in that 140 pound awesome division. Fight. Um, great fight. Uh, just what do you what do you make of this the, the fight itself before we, we break down the fight? Yeah. So uh, phenomenal fight. Both guys. I tip my hat to both of them. Um, I've been a big fan of Josh Taylor for a long time. I love the way he fights. I think I think um, in in terms of a, a, a stylist and a style, I'm not a big fan of watching southpaws in general. But he doesn't fight like a true southpaw. Mm. You know, um, he's such a good counterpuncher. He has fantastic balance. You know, he's, he stays really low. Gets he has good head movement, um, has a good jab, but he's got vicious counter punches both, and he's a body puncher. Mm. So it's like all those things put together. Um, I really like watching him fight. And Ramirez is just one of those guys. He's just. A, Tough dude. I hate stereotyping people, but he's a tough he's Mexican. That Mexican blood. <laughs> he's yeah. a tough Mexican. It doesn't matter. You can, yeah. Any Mexican, even you're not a Mexican that is a doctor or a lawyer, mm -hmm. I guarantee you can fight. Yep. yep. <laughs> I guarantee it. Yep. They're and tough. And then at that weight class, Ramirez is really big, mm -hmm. very big um, and strong. He uh, he impressed me in that. I didn't I didn't think I didn't give him much of a shot against Taylor. I thought that Taylor could just do too do too many things. Mm -hmm. And if as long as he stayed out of a dog fight, that he was going to have his way. Uh, but Ramirez, I mean, was fighting tooth and nail to the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, very, very. Especially after the heavy knockdowns as well. <sighs> I don't, dude. He went down so hard on that second knockdown on his back. He got up on really shaky legs and then was winning rounds mm -hmm. in the late at the, at the end of the fight. You know, like he's very, very tough. Testament to a true Mexican warrior. Definitely. It, Kenny Bayless is coming to a little state because he's he, he, well, people have come out now and said he's gave Ramirez 22 seconds to get up after <sighs> that. Uh, wow. To recover after that second <laughs> knockdown, I mean, some people are saying it should have been a, t a knockout yeah. for George. But um, what do you make of that? I didn't go back and, and, mm. and go over it like that. Um, at the time, I didn't mm -hmm. notice it. I didn't realize it. But it, it was in the heat. It was, the room was insane. Mm. You remember, you were there. Mm. Was, the room was crazy. The fight was it was action packed throughout, and that was like such a out of nowhere shot. So um, I didn't notice it at the time. I'd have to go back and look. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if anything's possible. Josh I is, thought he was going to knock him out anyway, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Josh has oh, uh, done it in 18 fights. His last six opponents were 136 and that. one. That and that graphic. one loss is Terence Crawford. That was uh, Postal. To Postal, yes. Yeah, so yes. to Postal. So, I mean, what do you make of Josh's achievement and what he's done in such a short space of time? It's incredible. Mm. Absolutely incredible. Especially, like you said, like in such a short space of time. Uh, against the, 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 the guys that he beat, um, you know, Ramirez, uh, Pro Gray, um, Postal, and that was very, I think it was 13, it was a 13 fight, I mm -hmm. think. 13 fight, yeah. yeah. Postal is, is, a, is a tough out for him, but gave Ramirez hell. Mm -hmm. I commented that, commentated that fight. It was a mm -hmm. very, very close fight. Um, so yeah, so I, in terms of all that, yeah. Uh, tremendous. You're still 140, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Any call-ups? <laughs> no, I, mean, I got I to get back in the mix first. Yeah. I can't go right to the right. And when's that going to be? Uh, August. August. August for Triller, yeah. Looking forward to it. Hopefully I can come out and cover yeah, that fight. Yeah, so, Still talking so. as two media guys. It could be a media and fighter again. Right, exactly. But since you are still a fighter, yeah. uh, huge fighter, since you've been in, you shared the ring with two of these guys, that mm -hmm. Pacquiao and Spence, uh, your thoughts on that fight? And can you pick a winner on that one? I mean, is Pacquiao too old? Is Errol Spence too young and fresh? Well, how, how do you make, what do you make of that? Yeah, uh... You know, I think both. <laughs> I think I think uh, you know, 
Pacquiao is definitely older and he could be long in the tooth, but it doesn't matter because he's, he's Pacquiao. Mm. Um, and he finds a way to win. And he's, he's just... He's, he's got the tools to, to, to win that fight. He does. He can win that fight. But uh, if I had a pick, I'm picking Spence. You've shared the ring with both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of fight are you expecting? You know how Fence come, you, know, you know how Spence, what Spence brings to the table? Yep. You know what Pacquiao brings to the table? So what kind of fight? You're picking Spence, but what kind of fight are you expecting? Yeah, I think it's going to be... Um, I think it's going to be very interesting early on. Because um, I, I think Pacquiao is going to be smart at first. He's going to box smart is use his jab use those angles try and try and be sneaky you know have walk Spence into shots um, I, but I also think Spence is going to be smart mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be as aggressive we've seen him in some fights where he kind of walks into shots like with Kel Brook he got hit with some mm -hmm. shots he really just didn't need to um, even with Danny, Danny Garcia he was kind of uh, he, he not to say that he was disrespecting him but he wasn't that worried about what was coming his way um, I think with Pacquiao he'll be a little a little more um, a little more cautious early on and then just look to close the ring and make, make Pacquiao work hard. Yeah, I think that's really the key for, for Spencer just to make him really work, make, make Pacquiao work hard. I know. All night. Yeah, definitely. It's a fight I'm looking forward to because I'm a massive Manny Pacquiao fan. How could you not be? As long as he goes out How could and you not he doesn't yeah. get too hurt and yeah, honestly, I hope... I honestly, hope. I, I, I've, I've thought about that in the past. I think I've said that before but it's, 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 it doesn't matter. He's, he's a warrior yeah. and he's, he's, he has enough wherewithal in that ring at this stage I don't think anybody can really hurt him hurt him no, def well one final question then the heavyweights I mean we've seen the super lightweights do it get the undisputed fight on the go the heavyweights don't be missing out uh, your thoughts on that whole and situation I'm pissed about it yeah. <laughs> I, was really, I was really happy about the uh, the Fury Joshua matchup that was going to happen um, and uh, I'm, I'm not pissed about it because we got to wait for that I'm pissed about it because Wilder's a very dangerous mm. guy he can still hurt he can still win that fight yeah you know and that's just the way that Wilder is. He's a one. He's a one-punch phenom. So Tyson could have his way all night long, and then walk into a right hand, and and then that whole idea is out the we window. We almost seen it in the first fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. It, but even in the second fight, I was there watching the fight. I'm like, I even know, you know, uh, uh, Wilder was getting beat around the ring. I'm like, this guy can. If he can still punch, he can still knock you out. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, there you go. Well, Chris, you're doing your media duty. Yeah, so, I just sat here for an hour. You sat here for an hour just chilling, <laughs> and then I come around and annoy you, yeah. which is my job. So um, thank you so much for doing this for TV again, and uh, enjoy the show tomorrow night. It's going to be a cracker, so yeah. thanks again, I'm Chris. Anytime. Thank you, brother. Yep, thank absolutely. you. Good stuff.